In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a breakdown on the pre-production phase of a short film called Into the Fire that I wrote and produced and just released here on the channel. Now, this video is part one in a series where I'm going to be breaking down every single stage of the project, ranging from pre-production, shoot day, editing, color grading, and sound design. But before we jump into the breakdown, if you're new here, my name is Joe and I own a video production company named Driven Films. On this channel, I bring you honest and unbiased reviews of camera gear that I use out in the field, as well as breakdowns of projects and tips and tricks that will help you to improve your video work. Now, if that's something you're interested in, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Now, with that out of the way, let's jump right into the breakdown. First, I wanna talk about my motivation behind this short film and then get into the pre-production process. Now, up until this point, I've shot a lot of product videos, car commercials, documentaries, and brand work, but I've yet to shoot any narrative work. So after I received the Kinefinity Mavo Edge 8K cinema camera to review here on this channel, I knew that I was going to have to shoot some test footage. So I figured what better way than to shoot a short film. Now, you might even call this a microfilm, honestly, call it whatever you'd like, but I felt it was a very good test of not only the Mavo Edge, but also my ability to put together a production in a very short timeline. Now, as soon as I confirmed that the camera was on the way, I started on the pre-production phase of this film, and I had just about two weeks to do this. So I started by getting a few ideas out on paper. Now I'm a big fan of medieval history and I've always wanted to tell a story based on historical events that took place during the Crusades. And since I decided on a medieval concept, I knew the actor that I wanted to work with right off the bat. Now I met Ron when I sold him my old Roki non lenses a few years back and he told me that he was an actor. So we exchanged Instagram accounts and I stayed in touch. So with a lead actor in place, and once I had the concept or the topic chosen, I started to jot down any idea that came to mind into a Notion document. Now, Notion is where I store most of my ideas. Now, anytime I'm starting a new project, whether it's for a client, a personal project, or even the YouTube channel, I begin by starting this document in Notion, and this provides me with a space to deposit any notes, references, or inspiration that I can gather along the way. Now I'm a very visual person, so to give myself some visual inspiration and reference, I gathered a bunch of reference shots from various medieval films and TV shows using ShotDeck.com. Browsing through ShotDeck, I was immediately drawn to Ridley Scott's Kingdom of Heaven, which I watched the director's cut of to immerse myself into that entire world. I also watched a few other movies like The Green Knight, Black Death, The Crusaders, as well as several medieval documentaries. And eventually a story started to form in my head. When coming up with the initial concept, one of the first questions that came to mind was what did these medieval warriors go through and what did they experience and how did it affect them? So that developed into the concept of this short film being a brief exploration on the psychological and spiritual effects that these wars, the Crusades had on these soldiers. So it's at this point I began to develop the main and only character, at least the only character that you would see on screen. So with a bunch of notes and reference in mind, I started to define who the main character is and what his challenge is. So I created a rough outline of the story in Notion. And once I finalized that outline, I started a screenplay document in Studio Binder. Now, while this was just a short three minute long film, the screenplay helped me to develop the story further and come up with a script that flowed. And being the first time I've written an actual screenplay, having Studio Binder to help me quickly and effectively create the screenplay document made things super easy. I didn't have to worry about formatting. I just began taking my ideas that were generated from the outline and my notes and began to write the screenplay within Studio Binder. And after showing the screenplay to a few friends to get their feedback, I began to make revisions until I was happy with it. Now with the screenplay finalized, I created a rough shot list in Notion. And when I say that it was rough, I mean that it was just a few lines of text describing what shots I wanted to get. So once that rough shot list was done, I sent over the shot list to a storyboard artist that I found on Fiverr. So when using services like Fiverr and Upwork, it's important to do your research before you commit to hiring a contractor. And after a few hours of searching, I found a storyboard artist that I was completely comfortable with and we started on the project. 
Once completed, the storyboard helped to provide a visual starting point for my full shot list. It helped me to determine the flow of the shots and, in my opinion, was a vital part of the pre-production phase. Now, you don't always need to have a storyboard, but anytime your project has the time or the budget, I advise you to do one, especially if you're working with a team. With the storyboard done, it was time to start on the master shot list. I like using Notion for my shot list because I find it quick and easy to fill out all the details for the shot and customize the shot list contents depending on the project. For example, if I'm doing a shot list for B-roll of one of my YouTube videos, I really don't need columns for scene, FPS, or voiceover. But on the other hand, if it's a narrative project like this one or a commercial, I'll need all of that info to be filled out. So with the shot list finalized, I needed to tie up a few more pieces of post-production. I then started to make a list of all the props and costumes that I wanted to purchase and made a list of gear and equipment needed to pull this whole thing off. So then I started to do some shopping on Amazon and picked up some very affordable cosplay props. Now, even though these were all cosplay props and something that you wouldn't necessarily see in real life, I also kept in mind that many medieval short films have their characters using swords that looked like they were freshly made and had never seen a single battle. So I asked my brother John if he could do the prop work for me. He distressed the sword, which some of you might recognize, and he removed this weird elven language on the pommel, and he distressed the blade and the sword, as well as the dagger. So with all the prop work done, and all the costumes purchased, all the early pre-production stuff done, it's at that point that I needed to decide on a lens package that would not only work well with the Mavo Edge, which is a large format sensor camera, but also a lens that has a good amount of character, but was still sharp. So I decided to go with the Tokina Vista Prime lineup of lenses. And seeing as I already own the 35 millimeter, I still knew that I needed more than just one focal length. But thankfully my rep Justin at Tokina USA was kind enough to send me a few loaner lenses. He sent me the 65 millimeter and the 135 millimeter Vista Primes. So with the gear and props taken care of, it was time for location scouting. In terms of choosing a location, my friend and client Sean recently bought a property that we were discussing, so we went out and scouted the property. So for location scouting, I used two iOS apps. I use CadRage and PhotoPills. You could use all sorts of apps, but I prefer these two. And CadRage allows me to enter a camera and lens package and then take photos of the location at simulated focal lengths based on the data that I enter. So unfortunately at the time of scouting, CadRage did not have the Mavo Edge in their system. So I just used the Zcam E2 F6 with the Tokina lenses. I then used photo pills to determine the position of the sun at the time that we were gonna start shooting. This helped me to determine when we need to start shooting the first scene, which was going to be a golden hour battle scene. So with the scouting done, I just needed to assemble a crew. I reached out to a few friends, as well as put a feeler out on an Instagram story to see if anyone was interested in helping out. Now I quickly received a bunch of DMs with people offering their help. And to be honest with you, it was so overwhelming and, and just made me feel really good with how many people offered their help. So I appreciate each and every single one of you guys that DM'd me. And of course, I appreciate the entire team that helped out AJ, the first AC, Alex, the production assistant, Matt shooting behind the scenes, CJ shooting behind the scenes stills, Sean for you know lending us his property, and also Richard for being our pyrotechnic. So again, I appreciate every single person that not only helped out on the film, but reached out and decided to help or offered their help. So again, thank you guys so much. So with that being said, I really want to remind you guys who are watching this that yeah, you may be by yourself and you may be, you know, very low budget and you probably don't have any money to pay a crew. But if you just reach out to people and just say, hey, I'm producing this, this is what I'm doing. Would you like to be a part of it? Sometimes people will offer up their help and you guys can produce something that you're all proud of. So again, definitely consider networking, putting yourself out there on social media because you never know who's gonna offer up their help. So with the team fully assembled, the screenplay and script completed, the storyboard and shot list done, the props ready to go, it's now time for shoot day, which we're gonna talk about in depth in the next video. So that wraps up the full pre-production breakdown of the short film Into the Fire. 
Now, while this isn't the method that others may use, especially bigger productions, it is the process that I found to work for a small team or often a solo filmmaker like myself. Now, I think it's important to note that while we shot this project as a small team of just a few people, it was still very important to put in a time and effort to put together a production plan. This thorough production plan allowed me to not only produce, but shoot and direct a piece of work that the entire crew was proud of in just a short amount of time. So guys, if you enjoyed this breakdown, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss part two, where I break down the cinematography phase of the short film. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to click the thumbnail at the end of this video so you could watch the full version of my short film, Into the Fire. I really hope you guys learned something from this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Until next time, take care.